Hi, welcome back to App Academy, DJ Holland here. In the last episode, we learned how to perform our very first mix using sync. Pushing on from that, in this episode, we're gonna look at pitch faders, DJing without sync, and the use of different views. Let's get started. Today we're going to be looking at doing a mix but without sync. So once again we're going to be using the classical view within Algorithm DJ Pro. So we'll tap that, open it up and once again we're going to load music in from the Crossfader App Academy Spotify playlist. If you want to play along with the same songs you can do so. We'll link it below. This is free for anyone to use, you just need a Spotify premium playlist. So we've loaded in the same two songs that we did the mix with in the first episode with the sync button. We're not gonna use that today. We're gonna to perform a manual beat match. However, we're gonna do it via the use of the visual waveforms. Now waveform is a visual representation of the music. You've got two just up here on top of the track. They're uh, a, a very zoomed out overview of, this, of the entire track. Uh, but that is a waveform and the reason why we're doing that is because we don't have any headphones plugged into this iPad at the moment. We don't have a splitter cable, which is what you'd need uh, to be able to monitor music on uh, this DJ app. But we don't need that to perform our first mix. We just need two pieces of music and what we've got in front of us. And I'll show you how to do that now. So just like in the last episode, we're just going to quickly make sure our cue points are set on the first beat. Perfect. Bob on. Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure these songs are playing at the same speed. The reason why we need to make sure that happens is so every downbeat, every every you know kick drum, and every clap is happening at the same time. That's how you perform a mix, that's how you blend music, by playing them at the same time and making sure that the kicks are the same and the claps are the same, that's how you perform a smooth mix. Now at the moment, we can see in these little two panels here that the right hand deck is actually at 123 beats per minute and the left hand deck is at 120. So what we need to do is we need to just quickly tap into this panel here. Uh, you don't need to do this every time, we're just gonna do this the first time to make sure a couple of settings uh, are active. So ignore the BPM section, this is where you change the BPM if the computer, the iPad, had got it wrong, but it hasn't. It's analyzed the song perfectly. We know it's 120. We're just gonna tap into tempo. Now in this tempo section, there's two things we want to make sure are turned on. The first one is this invert option. The reason why we have this invert option on, if it's turned off, this fader here, the pitch, the speed control pitch fader, when you swipe it up, it increases the speed of the track. And when you slow it down, it, and when you bring it down, it slows down the track. Now, we don't want that. It seems quite logical, doesn't it? Up to go faster, down to go slower. But what we want to do is make sure that invert is turned on. And the reason why we have that, so basically when you bring it down, it's actually speeding up, and when you push it away or up, it's actually slowing down. The reason why we want that on is because controllers, CDJs, turntables, more advanced pieces of, of DJ hardware all have it set so you bring it towards yourself to speed up and a way to slow down. So if we set that now, when we're just learning the very, very basics on an iPad, we set that setting now, we're always gonna be used to that being the norm rather than the other way around. The other thing we need to make sure is we've got this little musical icon turned on. Now what this is, it's a pitch lock or the key lock. Um, CDJs, are Pioneer controllers, uh, they call it master tempo, but basically what it does is if it's turned off and you speed up a track, we'll just drop into the vocal here so you can hear it more dramatically. If you start playing that song and you start to speed up that track without master tempo or pitch lock or key lock turned on, as you can hear, as you speed it up, the pitch rises quite dramatically. And the same happens if you slow the track down. It 
slows down, almost sounds like Darth Vader starting to sing it. It's not very nice and uh, limits the range of what we can play with without the audience thinking, this sounds a bit weird. So, there's two ways you can turn it on. That little icon there on either side, or again, you can just toggle it on and off in this tempo section here. If you leave that on, then no matter what, how much you speed up the track or slow it down, it's still gonna sound like the original track. You're not gonna lose any of the quality um, and it's not gonna sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks is singing it, that's for sure. So, we're gonna perform the same mix as we did in the first episode, but without sync. So we'll get the crossfader over to the left hand side. And before we press play, what we wanna make sure is that these two tracks are actually the same speed. So we'll get this track playing, the track's playing. So before we even think about mixing in the second track, we need to make sure the speeds are the same. So we're gonna slow this one down using that fader. Perfect, as you can see, brought them both down to 120. That's fine. Now, when we press play on this track, it's gonna be perfectly playing at the same time. So if you're slightly behind, you know, you've not timed your, your entry right, it's not gonna run away from you, it's just forever gonna stay that far behind. So, how do we know if we're behind or ahead? In this view, can't really tell. However, thankfully, we do have in the middle here, we press that, this is an extended zoomed in waveform view. We've lost the faders, the pitch tempo sliders, but thankfully we've already set the BPMs, so that's not to worry. What we're gonna do now is, we can see if we go back to our original cue point, that we're at the beginning of this track here. So I've just set that off playing that second track. And as you can see, there's a red line down the middle of this extended waveform, this zoomed in waveform. The red line is what we're gonna meter the two songs against. We can see we've got a bit of a beat grid here. Uh, the white lines are the downbeats, on every bar of music. So every four beats, there's a thicker white line. These white lines want to be identical. They want to be parallel as, it, as they cross through this red master line, if you will. So what we want to do is make sure that these white lines at the beginning of every bar of music, they want to be passing through the red line at the same time. That way, we know our music's in phase because the bars of the music are starting at the same time. And we know that the beats will be in time because they're both set on a downbeat. We can use the cue button as we set it on the first beat, the first bar of music. We can use that to um, tap our music into time as, as close as we can. So most DJs will count. One, two, three, four, one. As you can see, I'm actually behind here. They're not in line. So how do we speed up the track that's not playing to match the track that is playing? Well, at the bottom of each deck, you see these plus and minus buttons. The minus button is a scrub, and the plus button is a nudge. By holding and pressing the nudge button, we can speed up temporarily that track to bring it back into time. We always recommend that you speed up or scrub, slow down the track that's not playing, as this allows uh, the audience who are listening to the original track to continue dancing to the speed of the track that's been playing the entire time. So let's do that again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. Again, I'm behind, so I'm just gonna speed up on this track using the nudge button. Slightly too much. There we go. Now that's in time. I can bring across my crossfader. As simple as that. No use of sync. And the track is perfectly in time. We've mixed it in. Now we've moved across. We can stop that, load another track in, and perform the same. Remember, we're teaching you to do this via the visuals, but music is something you hear, you don't see. If you're mixing across and it doesn't sound right, go back, check your beat grids, make sure you're dropping at the same point, make sure your music's in time and that you're all in, um, that you're playing at the same speed. Use your ears, not your eyes, but that's how you can perform your first mix just using the waveforms. 
Hope you enjoyed. Catch you in the next one.